given that I only posted four videos, I think, in the whole of 2022, and the last one was in October, perhaps catch up to a bit of an optimistic description, but I have got some new content coming up soon, so I thought this is another reason why now's a great time to catch up, let you know a little bit first about how my own language learning has been going, maybe that will encourage some comments from you below to tell me about yours, and then look a bit ahead to what's coming up then here at How to Get Fluent. A lot of my effort has been going into my basic Japanese and I did update on that uh, last April. One of the reasons I haven't uh, done anything on here about it since then is really there's not that much to say. <laughs> you know, sort of like watching paint dry in a way. But my view of language learning is that it's a long-term thing, it involves a lot of engagement, which is really interesting for the language learner if you set it up right, but there's not always that much to see for other people. So I'm really excited by and pleased with the progress I've been making with Japanese. But what I want to say here is I've just been keeping going with the undramatic daily engagement. And uh, you're listening to a lot of podcasts too, particularly when I'm jogging or walking. But I'll do a separate video on that, certainly. My other uh, language which isn't so advanced is my Basque. And with that, again, I've been doing a lot of listening. And that's daily as well as with the Japanese. But also I have a, well, ideally a couple of conversation seconds, uh, se sessions a week, one-to-one -one on Skype with teachers who I pay to do that with me. And while my speaking in many ways is still very, very rough and ready, I certainly uh, can follow radio discussions now, native level radio discussions in a way which I wasn't able to do, say, a year ago. So that's really, really encouraging, particularly when I think, you know, I'm coming up this year actually to the 10th anniversary of when I started Basque. So again, it's been a long, steady journey. And one thing I really enjoyed in uh, back in December actually was to go back to the London Basque Society, whose events I used to attend several times a year, really. I started actually having classes with them back in 2013, but then I didn't because of COVID, there was nothing going on. And then they put on a few events in 2021, end of 2021, start of 2022, which I, I couldn't make. But we had a great Christmas dinner that was in early December up in North London. It was a wonderful occasion and it was lovely to see some of the learners and native, as it were, speaker society members who remembered me, who know me. And that's a wonderful thing, the way community is working out for me with that language over the longer term. If you're learning Basque or another minority language, have you found particularly challenge, particular challenges with that? Any questions, let me know underneath. Cripes, a lot of police vans around. Looks like Central Brixton is cordoned off. What's going on? So I'm doing a detour. It seems that uh, somebody's actually been run over by a bus. It was a fatality. Now, where was I? Counting my blessings, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, I was talking about Basque. Uh, another thing that I actually had the opportunity to do back in, I think it was almost a year ago now actually, was uh, appear on Basque Radio. It was International Basque Learners Day and my teacher sort of asked me to do it. I didn't like to say no, I didn't feel ready to do it. But his brother worked in the, the, uh, at the radio station, which was the Bisco local radio station from Bilbao. So anyway, I did it. It was live, a live interview. And the interviewer, she, she was speaking pretty fast, but I managed to, managed to get through it. And uh, it was good fun in the end. There was only one time I hadn't actually understood the question and I had to sort of waffle around it till it became clear. But otherwise, yeah, I'm glad I did it. I needed a push, I think. I always do to do that sort of thing. Um, I'm not somebody who can, you know, I do like sort of fake it till you make it uh, in language learning or in anything else really in a sense. I actually looked around a small apartment in this block when I was trying to find somewhere to buy here in Brixton in South London 10 years ago now. Ended up going for a larger house, but um, it would be rather a nice place to live in a sense. Very, very central here, very near the underground station. What about my Russian? What have I been doing in the language in the last year or so? Well, no writing, which I could really uh, do with uh, practicing, and not much talking either, because the time and the money for that's been going, as I say, on Basque. And mainly uh, watching videos on YouTube, actually, about the situation uh, with the war in Ukraine. Uh, so it's native level current affairs YouTube, really, which is my main way of interacting uh, with Russian, also some people on Instagram as well. So Russian is sort of, you know, bubbling along. 
just coming on to the Stockwell Road here, so on the boundary between Brixton and Stockwell. Once you get into Stockwell, it is the area known in London as Little Portugal. There are many uh, Portuguese uh, migrants who came over in the 60s and 70s first, and then other waves since then. One of the reasons I actually started learning Portuguese back in 2010 was because I moved back to this part of London. Actually, I was lodging initially with my friend who I'm going to have lunch with now. And you hear Portuguese uh, in its European form on the streets here. Certainly, it's the second language. Although I was learning 2010, 11, 12, did a trip to Portugal in 2013. Uh, since then, that's when I started Basque. So really, Basque has, uh, uh, you know, had priority. And then I started with Japanese in 2019. So Portuguese on hold, but it will be definitely, definitely coming back. I listen to Welsh uh, on the radio, usually at lunchtime. I listen to the lunchtime news broadcast. And actually, I have been contributing to the media in Welsh myself since the invasion of Ukraine. When I was a Russian history academic, I used to occasionally talk about the situation in Russia, uh, Central and Eastern Europe. And uh, Radio Cymru, the Welsh language service of the BBC, has been in touch quite a few times in the last year. And I've been contributing on the radio and on the telev television news occasionally, uh, discussing uh, events. And you'd be surprised in the Welsh speaking community how they manage to find people with something to say on virtually any topic. There's always a Welsh speaker somewhere in the undergrowth. I read a lot of Welsh too and I follow or followed a lot of Welsh tweeters on Twitter. Some of my closest friends uh, of you know several decades standing are uh, fluent Welsh speakers and I've got to know several who are learning Welsh as well through the polyglot community. Talking of Twitter, one of my New Year's resolutions actually carried out was to delete the said app from my smartphone and that I did because I was just spending too much time on it. And what about German? Well I did the Goethe C1 exam back in 2015. Since then I've continued to watch a lot of material in German speak and uh, you know also read quite a bit and that's been continuing in the last month. But the other thing I've been doing is building out my uh, role as a German tutor, motivator and teacher if you like. I already have had a German course, an intermediate German course over at How to Get Fluent. It's called the Weekly German Workouts. If you're interested, I'll link underneath. That's been actually uh, going for a couple of years now, but I've been building out a new complete beginners course. And uh, so that has been taking a huge amount of my time over the last two years, really. So that is something which has really, you know, I poured my heart into. And the first students who've been on it uh, have I think really enjoyed it. There's been great feedback. I will be uh, opening the doors again on that one, probably around about April time, but we'll see. I'll let you know. If you're a long-term language learner, let me know in the comments about how you juggle your different languages. Is it that you will do one for several years, get it to a certain level and pause it, or you revive languages when something relevant happens to make them important to you again in your life? Do you keep more going in parallel? There are various ways to tackle this, but I have always felt and found that once I got to a sort of upper intermediate level, sure I may get a bit rusty, but after you know even a day or two of re-engaging, it all comes back as if you know I hadn't I hadn't been away as it were mentally or spiritually from the language. I'm now on the South Lambeth Road, which runs between Stockwell Green, which has not been green I think for several centuries, and Vauxhall. There's been a new development over the last ten years of tall towers which have been built here, mainly off-plan investment apartments. I think uh, I am not a fan. <laughs> See what I mean about the Portuguese? In just a few days, there will be uh, the first of my five Polyglot Gathering 2022 vlogs. Bit of a delay? Yes, it's true. But finally, uh, the first one on the eve of the event is out. It's a lot of fun, I think. And uh, yes, I'm just touching up the thumbnail and then I will be dropping that, as I believe they say, here on the channel very, very soon. I'm just arriving at the cafe now, so I'd better finish, but it's nice to be back and uh, I'd love to hear how things have been going in your language learning life. See you soon!